Right, there we go, folks. So we're going to have a little look at, uh, we're going to work our way through there, Steep to Tanya. I've got uh, Grace and Amok here joining me for this little session here. You guys have already been doing a little bit of work on the, the first page. Um, and I'm uh, just going to run through the whole thing. So I'm going to go through it quite quickly. So just to warn you, you may want to stop and pause this video lots as you go through because it's a lot to take on board. And uh, So first thing is we're going to do a little recap of the, the first little line to this. So, and guys, you just, just play along with me to do as much or as little of it as you can okay, as we go along. So in our left hand, we've got this little pattern here. Uh, oh, the other thing I should say is, uh, it's really quite hard trying to work out what key this piece is in. It's sort of in G major, or is it in E minor? It's one of those, it's not really quite sure what key it's in, I think, but there's definitely moments of G major, and then there's moments of G, ma G minor and G major. So anyway, so we've got, we've got to think about F sharps in here. Uh, and also we're in six eight, which uh, as these guys know, is a compound time signature, which is going, a uh, one and a two and a one. So six eight is what they call compound duple, which is just a posh way of saying it's compound in twos. So the, you can feel it here, it goes a one and a two and a one. And you can see in, as you look through the music, you've got lots of little groups of quavers which are grouped into beats, which would be like a, a dotted crotchet. Right, so here's our little left hand riff. You've got a, a D to an E and your thumb up on the G. And make sure you're, you're looking for all of this in your music as we play. So if I just went one, two, and we just tried that little riff thing first of all. I go one, two, a one and a two and a one and a da dum ba bum ba dum. Then you go D, D, and then on bar, the end of bar five, you're going to drop down to a D and then onto an E. Now here's the bit you might want to mark in your music because the next note is G with your third finger. So you're walking up, four over, and that brings you back on bar seven into that. So let's go from the top, here we go. So we're just going to do that. I'm going to put the right hand as well, but you, guys, you might just want to do one where we just play the left hand for a moment, okay? So one, oh, and also lots of pedal as well, wherever the pedal signs are on. One, two. A one and a two and a D, D, low D, E, stretch, pedal off for a moment and back on. Now when we get to bar nine, which is where I've just stopped, you'll want to you'll wanna keep going, but it actually changes there. So, that, and we put our thumb on the E. So on bar nine, folks, do we, all, we can all see that moment where your thumb, if you're looking for something to circle, I'm always looking for things to circle, uh, those little critical moments that if you do them, everything will work out right. And that thumb on that E is the moment. If you get that right, it sets up the next bit. And then your third goes on to B flat, C. And then we're switching to bass clef. So that note is D there. So, and I'm just going to look on a bit. So, uh, guys and girls, we've got on bar, so that was bar 10. Then on bar 11, you drop down and you do that little thing where you walk up and down. See that there? Okay, and you hold it for a while. Then on bar 13, the last line, you drop down an octave. And you walk. But it goes back onto the C, and then down onto an A for a whole beat. One up to D, and then for the next bar, up to an A, and it's a pause, so kind of everything stops for a moment, and then it goes into the right hand. So let's just play through the whole of the left hand here. So for anybody coming to this totally fresh watching the video, this is all of the left hand up to bar, that whole section up to bar 13, 14, 15, okay? So we'll set our hands up. So it's a bit of a funny hand position, isn't it? So you got... So after two, one, two, a one and a two and a D, D, drop an octave, D, E, stretch, pedal off for a moment, pedal on. Now, coming up 
up to bar nine here. Here's the thumb. Hold on the D. You're going to drop an octave. You hold there. Drop an octave. Drop down to A and hold. Put it on the pedal. Then a D. New pedal. Up to the A. New pedal. And you notice there it says poker row, which means what, folks? What does poker row mean? Poker row is uh, pulling back a bit, slowing down a bit, absolutely. And often, rowls and writs are followed by the, the expression R tempo, which is, do you remember, Grace, what that one was? So when you get your R tempo, that's, so poker row was slowing down a bit. R tempo is, back, yeah, back, and if, exa if you want to go exa exactly, it means back to the original speed. At, at speed, which kind of weird didn't really quite mean anything, does it? But when it says at speed, it means at the speed it was, basically. Okay. So that's our left hand bit. So let's have a little look of, um, for the purposes of our video, let's have a little recap of the right hand bit for anybody coming to this fresh for the first time. So in bar one, two, at the end of the second bar, where it says P dolce, which means quiet, and uh, dolce is sweetly, by the way. So. It's all nice and mellow, basically, okay? So that's all based around, mainly around a G major chord. So it goes, uh, so that's a useful shape. So you've got D, B, D, G, A, B, okay? So we try that, one, two. Now you've got this weird, you know, in the left hand where you start doing D, D, D. Now the right hand bit, to go with those Ds, we've got this, so there's the very end of the line. See the chord there? So that's an A and a D with your second finger there, making a fourth. So you strike the chord. Now this is one of those confusing moments because you've got two curvy lines. One is a tie, one is a slur. So the top one is a tie because it ties to another D. The bottom one is a slur because it moves on to a B and down to a G. You get it? So. And people often say to me, what's the difference between ties and slurs? Well, obviously ties are held and slurs are smooth, but the, the how you know to do them is a tied note will be the same note. I mean, it's a bit of an obvious thing to say, really, but if you've got two Ds at the top with the line running between them, that's a tie. If you've got a little group of notes, maybe with the curved line going under or over them, that's going to be a slur, okay? So that's the whole of that bit, which we've been looking at. Shall we try that? So the first one goes, here we go, straight in and Restrike onto the B flat, restrike and stop on the B. And we've got a little uh, sign in there that that, that that line, the straight line, is called tenuto. And it, it's not an accent, because an accent is like a little arrowhead, but it means give the note its full value. So it's it's almost the opposite of staccato. So now you should obviously you should give the note its full value anyway, but it's just pointing out that note needs to have its full value. Make sure it's there ringing away, okay? Um, right, let's go for the... <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. So, if I play in the left hand bit, let's all just do the right hand up to there, okay? So you get... One, two. Let me strike it together. Oh, I did the wrong fingers in the left hand. Oh, it's all right, I've got out of it. Now, the next bit goes the same. But when we get to bar nine, B flat, then you put your thumb on the E, and then of course you've got a B flat in the left hand. Okay. So, guys, you've done a bit on this, so we're going to play it hands together now, up to there. But anybody coming new to this piece watching the video, you will need to do some practice on it first before you attempt to do this death defying stunt of putting this hands together. It's one of those quite tricky to coordinate the first few times you do it. And, uh, but anyway, here it is. So as I say, if you need to, just ignore this bit for now and just work on the first section. When you're ready, here's a hands together one. So we're just gonna try and get up to bar nine, folks, okay? Uh, well, bar 10 on that first note, bar 10, okay? So two in, one, two. the B. 
B flat, and then changing the position of the left, and that takes us up to bar 10. Lovely. Now, we've had a look at the fairly simple notes there, haven't we? You can see that. So that's bar 9, 10, that's bar 11, isn't it? Then on bar 13, we drop down an octave to A. So we've had a little look at that. So let's have a look at these, the runs coming down in the right hand. Now there's no pedal on this bit, and these need to be legato, because they've got the curve. Now, it is actually possible to play these com totally, completely smoothly, but you can get something that's gonna all sound to all intents and purposes smooth. And that's the thing. So let's just run through it, folks. So we've got two and four on the D and the F. Then you go to C and E. Now, because you're using different fingers, that can be completely smooth. But then to get to B flat and D with your little finger and your third, you're gonna have to leave the thumb on, but cross your three and five. And then you'll be able to walk down. No, don't forget, there's a B flat now, that's it. And then for the last one, again, your thumb is going to have to let go, but you can keep the B flat held for a moment to give you a smooth phrase. So there's, here's the run again. So when you do this, leave the thumb on, cross over. Then on this one, take the thumb off early. That's it. So I'm on, don't forget your B flat there, okay? Okay. So let's just try it, putting the... Just the D in the left hand, so we're just going to, because the feel of it is one and a two and a one, so the, here we go, so we've got our D in the left hand, okay, and then, so thumb on that D, yeah, and then you've got your two and your four up the top, okay, so our two in, one, two, one, and leave the thumb, oh, I did the wrong notes, I'm about to do it again, okay, one, two, one. That's all right, I went wrong, but that's okay, because I went wrong as well, so you've got, a B, you've got the B flat there, okay? So you've got your B flat, and another B flat, because it will carry through for the rest of the bar. Should we try again? Okay, one, two, one. Leave the thumb on. Don't forget another B flat, and then one and two. Lovely. Now, leave that chord on, take your left hand down to the D. Now remember, it's only an octave, your little finger's halfway there already, that's it, and then it walks up and down. And you're going to strike an A, and then you release your other hand, and then you've got another little run here, and again, use exactly the fingering that's there. There's no black notes in it at all until the final chord. So it's two and four, one and three. Now, that little trick like before, leave the thumb on, cross your two and four over, down, back, and then bar 13, you'll see it is possible to get that chord in. So let's just look at that a couple of times. That's it, so here we got. Okay, okay so we'll try it with the left hand. So going from bar, bar 12, we're just gonna try and put that bit together, just from that, that A going into this, okay? Uh, so two in, one, two, one. No. So that's bar 13. Now you drop down, don't play anything in the right hand because it's tied, that's it. Now that's all on going on the pedal there, which means you can leave it on with the pedal. Then you strike your next chord gently, re-pedal to clean the sound, you know, to clear the sound. Then move up to your final chord, play the chord, and then repel straight away. And then take it all off for a moment. There we go, so just to finish off this little video, let's just play the whole uh, of that first page together. It may not be perfect, you know, we might slow down a bit, but we're just, gonna, just trying to get it flowing. And remember this piece, some pieces are very vague about pedaling, and they'll just say comped, and you do whatever, you know, the general rule is, if it's a new chord, it's a new pedal. This one is very specific because they've got all these little atmospheric bits where they, you deliberately leave the pedal on. And then suddenly there'll be sections where there's no pedal at all. And that's where you've got to be really careful with to have good fingering so things come out sounding nice. Okay, here we go from the beginning. So after two, one, two, um, pedals on. Trying to bring the tune through more than the left hand. So chord, pedal, chord, pedal, chord, pedal, 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 p
pedal off for a moment and back on. Just trying to bring the, the tune out a bit. Repedal. Leave it flat. Thumb on D. Now there's no pedal on any of this. Drop an octave. Being louder and quieter. Thumb on A. All white notes, two and four. So we get just, and you want a tiny moment of the silence. So before that next section goes, you'll get. Um, so you get like a little silence, but that's the next bit. There we go. So that's our first page.